In that moment, the entire world was reminded. The web, the invisible fabric of our connected lives, began with one man. But who is he? And why did he give it away for free? Before there were browsers, before search engines, before going online even meant anything, one man dreamed of linking knowledge, not for profit, not for power, but for possibility. You've used his invention today, probably a hundred times, but almost no one knows his name. The story starts in London with a boy who grew up in a house where computers weren't magic, they were dinner conversation. Tim Berners-Lee's parents, Conway and Mary, helped build one of the world's first computers, the Ferrant Mark I. So when most kids were learning to ride bikes, Tim was learning about logic and binary. By his teens, he was building his own machines from spare parts, not gaming consoles, actual computers. At Oxford, he studies physics, but he was more interested in what connected things, how information moved. One day, he built a computer out of an old TV and a microprocessor. Because when you can't afford a computer, you make one. He even got in trouble for hacking university systems, not for stealing, just curiosity. He wanted to see how things talk to each other. After university, Tim worked at places like Plessy Telecommunications and DG Nash. He built communication software, systems that let computers exchange messages. Each job gave him a new piece of the puzzle he didn't even know he was solving. He was unknowingly learning the grammar of connection, how machines could one day talk globally. And then in 1980, he arrived at CERN, a place with more data than anyone knew what to do with. What happened next would connect the planet. By 1980, Tim Berners-Lee arrived at CERN, a research lab with the biggest network of scientists in the world, thousands of researchers, hundreds of computers, and not one simple way to share what they were learning. Imagine, CERN was doing cutting edge physics but their data systems looked like a junk drawer. Everyone had a piece of the truth. No one had the whole picture. So Tim did what curious people do. He tried to organize the chaos. He built a program called Inquire. It let you jump from one piece of information to another, kind of like clicking a link before links even existed. It wasn't public, it wasn't big, but it was the seed of an idea that would one day grow into the web. He left, came back in 1984, and the problem was even worse. CERN had the largest network of computers in Europe, but no one could talk between them. So in 1989, Tim wrote a proposal for a global information system, basically a web of documents that anyone could access from anywhere. His boss called it vague but exciting, and honestly, that's kind of perfect. He designed three simple ideas, the DNA of the web, HTML, HTTP, and URLs. Together, they made information not just visible, but linkable. That's the web's magic trick. It connects knowledge. He built the first web browser and the first web page. It wasn't flashy, no colors, no ads, no videos, just words explaining what the web was. In 1991, the World Wide Web went live and humanity got its first homepage. No launch event, no press release, just a few lines of code that quietly changed the world. But the real miracle, he didn't just invent it, he gave it away. In 1991, the World Wide Web went public and within months, it started spreading faster than anyone expected. And here's the twist. The most revolutionary invention of the century didn't belong to anyone. In 1993, CERN made a decision that would define the web forever. They released the source code into the public domain. No patents, no fees, no gatekeepers. Tim could have sold it, controlled it, turned it into a fortune. Instead, he made it free for everyone. Think about that. 
the thing that powers every website you've ever used was given away. Tim knew freedom wasn't enough. The web needed rules, open, fair, and universal. So in 1994, he founded the World Wide Web Consortium, or W3C, at MIT. Their mission was simple. Make sure no single company could ever own the web. Under his watch, the web grew, not as a product, but as a public good. And yet, with every connection, came consequence. The web changed how we learn, work, fall in love, and fight. Tim saw his creation growing in ways he never imagined, and sometimes never wanted. In the 2000s, the open web started closing. Big platforms began to dominate. Data became currency, and privacy, optional. So he fought back, not with lawsuits or lobbying, but with new code. He launched the Web Foundation to defend digital rights. And later, the Solid Project, a new kind of web where you own your data, not corporations. In other words, the man who built the web is trying to rebuild it. His mission today is the same as it was in 1989, to make the web open, equal, and truly for everyone. He didn't just invent the web, he became its guardian. In 2012, as billions watched, the inventor of the World Wide Web sat quietly at his machine. Four words appeared. This is for everyone. It wasn't just a message, it was a promise kept. For changing how humanity communicates, Tim Berners-Lee was knighted, awarded the Turing Prize, and ranked among Time's most influential people in the 20th century. But if you meet him, he's still Tim, the scientist who prefers whiteboards to microphones. You know, most world-changing inventors make someone rich. The web made everyone connected. Berners-Lee never saw himself as the web's owner, only its caretaker. His life's work has been to keep it open, accessible, and ethical. Even now, he's still writing code on a new project called Solid, giving control of personal data back to users. He gave us more than technology. He gave us a new way to find each other. From activism to art to science to love, every hyperlink traces back to a single idea, that information should unite, not divide. He didn't just invent the web. He gave the world to itself. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I want to give a big shout out to the YouTube channel Mig Oro Edu, who are experts at AI storytelling and to whom all the credit goes for the AI portions of this video. Check them out at the link in the description and subscribe while you're there. They're doing some great work. Also, please leave your comments below to let me know how you like this video. If you want more experimental videos like this, I need your feedback. I'll see you in the next video, my friend.